Do you know that vaccinated people who catch COVID-19 are less likely to report serious illness with COVID-19 and related health problems than those who are unvaccinated? Getting the COVID vaccine is the surest means to protect you and your loved ones. The vaccine guides the body to identify COVID-19 and fight it. Get your vaccine shots and stay healthy. Vaccines are good for adults, youth, and children aged 5 to 11. If you need help to find a vaccination center or schedule a vaccination appointment, please call the African Career Education and Resources ASAP at 763 307 4731. You can also stop by ASAP's office Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The address is 680078 Avenue North, Suite 101, Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, zip code 55445. Hello world, welcome to Africa, let's talk. My name is Collins Kofi Opon, you can call me Mr. Beyond. Uh, tonight our conversation is on how COVID vaccinations save and protect lives at all ages. We'll be talking about vaccine breakthrough cases and what it means. Stick around so that you can learn more about what it is and if you have any experience to share with us from your vaccination or, or, or maybe catching COVID actually while unvaccinated, we want to learn and definitely listen to your experience as well and also welcome your feedback. The community vaccination today is actually in partnership with ESA, which is the African Career Education and Resources. And uh, I have the privilege of hosting a medical doctor here in the Twin Cities, uh, Dr. Sam Asante Boabin. And ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be, please help me welcome Dr. Sam Asante Boabin to the program. Good evening, sir, and you are welcome. Good evening, colleagues, and thank you very much. Absolutely. So, ladies and gentlemen, viewers, you heard it. I'm actually hosting Dr. Sama Santibuabin tonight on the program. We're talking about how vaccination saves and protects lives. And there are a lot of new data information coming out from the vaccination and COVID-19 that we want you to know. And also, if you have any experience to share with us, we'll be very much happy to learn about your experience. Uh, doctor, to begin with, we'd like you to actually paint for us a picture of the situation with COVID-19 and the new variant, uh, especially the Omicron, which we understand is now the dominant variant in the United States. If you can actually paint a picture of the situation with COVID-19, the new variant for us, please. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Collins, uh, for hosting me tonight. Uh, I, I feel privileged and honored to join you today as we discuss uh, this important topical issue. Um, to give a, a, a little bit of statistics, um, as of yesterday, I mean, there have been a total of almost uh, about 439 million confirmed cases of uh, uh, COVID-19. Um, about 6 million reported deaths. Um, those are the reported deaths to the World Health Organization. Mm. Um, and when it gets to vaccines, as of uh, the end of February, there have been uh, about 11 million, uh, sorry, 11 billion. Dose. 11 million? Yeah, because of you know the double dose, I believe. Um, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Administered. Um, so since COVID-19 started, I believe, end of um, 2019, mm -hmm. there have been different variants that have come. Some of them we did not hear much about. Mm -hmm. um, so there was an alpha variant, um, which was first noticed in the UK. And there was a, a, a beta variant that was actually discovered in South Africa. Um, I don't think we heard much about it. And there was a gamma variant in Brazil. Wow. And then I think that by the time we got to Delta, everybody was aware of the different variants. Uh, and then finally, uh, Omicron. Omicron was actually discovered in, um, originally was thought to have been discovered in South Africa, but I believe that multiple countries 
had Omicron almost at the same time. So same time. by way of variance, that is that is the picture that we have now. And as of now, I think the dominant variant, as we listeners may know, is the Omicron uh, variant. Wow, that is interesting. If you are joining us, please, this is Africa Let's Talk. We are having a conversation today about how COVID-19 vaccination saves and protects lives at all ages. If you have any experience to share with us, especially if you have received a vaccine or maybe if you had COVID whilst vaccinated or unvaccinated, we'd like to know your experience so that we can help build up this conversation. Doc, uh, the next thing I would like to know uh, is what are the new guidelines uh, necessary for people to actually follow uh, when they catch the virus or when they come into close contact with someone who may have the virus? What are the new guidelines? Because I know things are changing by the day yes. and we want to stay educated. You know, that's very true. I mean, the information on uh, COVID-19 changes almost by the minute and uh, you, you have to be in tune with it to keep abreast with that. So I think I will break it uh, broadly into exposure when you are fully vaccinated versus mm -hmm. exposure when you are not vaccinated. Um, at least it makes it easier for everyone to understand. Um, right. This, these guidelines are mainly coming from the CDC. Okay. So the first category is if you are exposed to someone with COVID-19, but you are not up to date with your uh, COVID-19 vaccine, whichever one that is available to you, then the recommendation from the CDC is that you mm -hmm. self-quarantine for at least five days. Five um, days, okay. Five days. Um, so you stay at home and you quarantine fully for the five days. Um, if you have other people in your home and you're gonna be in contact with others, it is important that you wear some facial covering mask mainly mm -hmm. uh, to prevent others in your own home for the four or five days. Um, a CDC also recommends that you do not travel uh, for at least 10 days after your exposure. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, after about five days, get tested. So these are the recommendations if you are not fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and the recommendation for testing is to test about five days after the exposure. Mm. Um, and then the second category is those who are fully vaccinated. So if you are fully vaccinated, there is no need to self-quarantine, even with that kind of exposure. Right. Um, you do not need to stay at home unless you develop symptoms. Oh, okay. Yes. And and then the, the, this is where it gets tricky. Even if you do not develop symptoms, it is recommended that after about five days of exposure, you get tested. Oh, okay. 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 Even um, if you do not develop the symptoms. Even if you do not develop the symptoms, still okay. get tested after about five days of exposure. And I'm talking about those who are fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. um, and then you continue to monitor your symptoms for at least 10 days since your last contact. Okay. So if you develop symptoms during these times, then you self-isolate, you wear a mask, and then you take all the necessary precautions uh, for the 10 days. For the 10 days. Yes. Wow. Until Thank you. Time. So it, it's it's a little complicated, and you know it's like I'm throwing a lot of words around, but um, we have to really take our time mm -hmm. uh, to let people know the difference between those who are fully vaccinated mm -hmm. and those who are not fully vaccinated. There is a third category, mm. and that is the those who are exposed after they have. Uh, themselves being diagnosed with COVID-19 oh. within three months. So mm -hmm. if, if someone has COVID-19 and recovers fully, 
but then within the, the three months of the, the, the infection, he gets exposed again. Mm -hmm. What does that person do? Mm. Again, CDC recommends no quarantine unless you develop symptoms. Okay. And then you need to monitor your symptoms for at least 10 days. And obviously days. you take all the precautions that are needed, including wearing a mask around friends and family and things like that. So so, so those are the, 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 the broad guidelines. Mm -hmm. Those are the broad guidelines. Definitely, mm -hmm. maybe in the course of the conversation, we'll be breaking it down. And also, if you have any questions, uh, whilst we talk about these guidelines and some of the data coming up of the COVID-19 as well as the vaccination, please, you are more than welcome to leave your questions in the comments box and we're definitely going to go ahead and ask your question or answer your question. Uh, Doc, there have also been conversations about the severity of sickness uh, between vaccinated people and unvaccinated people who actually catch COVID-19. Can you actually throw some more light on those two scenarios, that is vaccinated people and unvaccinated people who catch COVID-19, the severity of their sickness? Right. I think this is very important. I believe that everybody is aware that uh, mandates are kind of going away gradually and COVID-19 you know, numbers are kind of trending down. Mm -hmm. And I believe that to a large extent, this was uh, the result of the availability of vaccines mm -hmm. uh, to everyone. And, and, and so I believe that we are where we are um, in, in, in the broader context because of the availability of vaccines. So the, vac the advantages of the vaccines are, are numerous, but I will highlight the most important uh, ones. And the, the first one is that the vaccines actually reduced your risk of infection. Mm. Um, you know, once you receive your, your vaccine, once you receive your shot, your body begins to produce uh, antibodies or, or, or sort of countermeasures, let me put it that way in layman's language, uh, to the coronavirus. And these antibodies actually help to fight the virus um, mm -hmm. if you happen to be exposed. See, so you get the vaccine, your body arms itself, and then if the virus, you should be exposed to the virus, then you're already armed and ready to defend your body. So, right. so the first thing it does is that it actually reduces your risk of infection. Oh, okay. And having said that, it is still true that you can uh, become infected even after uh, uh, being vaccinated. Mm. You see? But the thing is that once a majority of the population, once a lot of the population is vaccinated, your chances of becoming infected after vaccination goes down because you see, we call something herd immunity. You mm -hmm. are immune and I'm immune. And so when we meet, our protection is sort of synergistic. So, so, so that is the first thing that the vaccine does. The vaccine right. actually reduces the risk of infection. Um, so it not only reduces your risk, it also contributes to the protection of the community in which you live. Wow. The second thing that the vaccine does is that uh, it protects against severe illness. You know, mm. when I was speaking earlier, mm -hmm. one of the things I mentioned was that you can still get an infection. You can still get COVID-19. And I believe that there are people who had COVID-19 even after they were vaccinated. And I, I think it would not be out of place to even use myself as an example that... Mm. I had two shots, and subsequent to that, I developed COVID-19. Wow. You know? so is, is that what they called the vaccine breakthrough cases? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So so you can call me one of the examples. <laughs> how to break through, you know. So what, what, do you think, what do you think might have caused that? Well, obviously, I mean, vaccine uh, efficiency would, would, or efficacy would wane after a period of time. So I believe mm -hmm. that. It, it probably waned after a time. And that's the reason why if you, if you are in tune, the booster shot mm -hmm. came into existence because it realized that 
the original, the two shots within three weeks or four weeks interval, you know, after a while, you know, it's, it's uh, efficacy kind of went down a little bit. So then the boost start to kind of boost your immunity again, to boost the body into producing more antibodies in readiness for uh, future exposure. Okay, mm. so so the second one, like I talk about, is that mm -hmm. it actually protects against severe illness. Um, so those who are vaccinated and get a second exposure are less likely to have a severe illness or even end up in a hospital uh, 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 setting. Right. Okay. And then the third one, which I don't think we talked about a lot, is the fact that vaccine also can help protect the unborn baby. Uh, studies have shown that antibodies from the mothers have passed on to the unborn babies and mm -hmm. uh, giving them protection even before they 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 come out. So so those oh. are some of the benefits of, of the vaccine. I think we could go on and on, but I think that uh, for listeners, these three probably will suffice for the night. Yeah, thank you so very much. And I also believe that even whilst we talk, many people will be recollecting their own experiences, especially mm -hmm. around December. I think for some reason, there was quite a massive uh, uh, situations of people getting COVID. And the people that I spoke to, at least I spoke to five people, of which two people were not vaccinated. And they tell me about the severity of them mm -hmm. getting the COVID, the sickness, one of them ending up in the hospital. Yeah. But all the three people who were actually vaccinated said, oh, we got the COVID, but then it wasn't as severe. Like right, they, right, they we're going right. about doing their own work, like right. nothing really has happened. So I'm right. sure people can relate to what we're saying. Please, if you also if you also have any experience you want to share with us, whether being vaccinated or not and getting the COVID, we'd like to know your experience, even whilst we have this COVID-19 vaccination community education right here. My name is Colin Scofi and of course, like I said, this is done in partnership with the African Career Education and Resources, ASA. Uh, Doc, uh, we are now talking about, uh, I think, I'm not sure, beginning of the year, we started hearing about at-home COVID-19 tests or yes. testing. Uh, how beneficial is it uh, in helping against the fights uh, or in helping the fight against COVID-19 as well as the vaccination efforts? Uh, what is the the point of having the at-home COVID-19 testing? Well, th that's a very important question. Uh, before I answer it, I'd like to take it from um, the, the tests that are available to mm -hmm. us, and then I will sort of narrow down on the home testing. Okay. Perfect. So um, th there are, are two major types of tests that are currently used to diagnose COVID-19. Um, so the first one is uh, the molecular test, which is called PCR. I think everybody knows uh, PCR, is the test mm -hmm. PCR. So that is what you're likely to get when you go to a laboratory or you go to a clinic or you go, you're in the hospital um, uh, um, setting. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, it is the sort of the gold standard of, of COVID testing. Mm -hmm. in that it is almost 100 um, percent um, accurate you know so it is it is it is it is what was relied upon at the initial stages but mm. you 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 can tell that one it requires expertise to do the PCR test oh, Obviously, okay. not everyone can do the PCR that's why you have to go to the lab and train scientists will work on your specimen and produce the results. Secondly, it, it took a lot of time, you know, sometimes up to five days, and people waited for even a week at the outset. Later mm -hmm. on, I think we were getting results a little sooner, maybe 24, 48 to 72 hours, uh, results were coming in. But it is by no means available to the general public. Hence, the, the rapid antigen tests. Oh, okay. So to, to, which is what we call the home test because the two are testing different things mm -hmm. you know, related to COVID-19. So just a quick summary that the antigen test, antigens are substances that cause the body to produce uh, immune response. Okay. I mean, they trigger the generation of antibodies. 
And, and uh, these tests are actually lab made. They are lab made antibodies mm -hmm. uh, in search of what? The COVID-19. So to do an anti antigen test, uh, you first treat the sample with a liquid that is containing some soap and, you know, just layman's language, that breaks apart cells and particles. Um, I think I'm going a little above that. <laughs> uh, then you apply the liquid to a strip, okay? So that strip actually contains COVID-19 antibodies. So oh, okay. you get the home kit, you know, what, whichever one you have, there is a, a place where you put the specimen. That specimen is actually, that where you put the specimen is actually pre-treated with the antibodies that have mm. been produced in the lab. And so what happens when the, you, so it's, if you have the COVID-19, say in your saliva, right? Mm -hmm. What it means is that you have the antigens in your saliva. Oh, okay. So when you put it on the strip, which is impregnated with antibodies, then you get a reaction because the antibodies spring into action trying to attack the antigens. Mm. And that is what we get with the color coding and things like that. Hmm. The, the, we are the, learning. The good news about this is, is that it, it's available to everyone. It's available to, you, you don't need any expertise. You don't have to be a lab scientist. You don't have to be a medical person. Everyone can do it. So it is easily available and it allowed people to know their state. You mm -hmm. know, the downside is that it's not as accurate as the PCR test. Oh, but okay. at least it gave you an indication of, hey, do I have COVID or I don't have COVID mm. and how to behave? Because, you know, most people, every cough, you know, was attributed to COVID, but even right. COVID, <laughs> people had colds and people had other things that produce cough. But true, you know, you remember the the, the days when any cough, you any say, cough at all, <laughs> coughing. but I think the uh, 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 rapid antigen test came and and made a significant difference in terms of the testing and the rapidity and the availability of testing to many people. Wow. Thanks so much. And uh, definitely uh, it, it's great because I know several people who ordered for these home at home tests and they get to know their status, whether they have the COVID-19 or they don't have the COVID-19, then the next steps which are necessary to be taken. We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back and actually talk more. If you have any questions, please. I have with me Dr. Sam Asante Wabin. You can actually pose your question and we would definitely ask him the question so that we can have some clarifications and some answers whilst we get into this conversation. Stick and stay with us. <laughs> Indeed, Mama Africa, we're talking about Africa. Let's talk right here. My name is Colin Skofiopo. I have with me as my guest for today, Dr. Sam Asante Bwabi, and we are talking about COVID-19 vaccination, how it saves and protects lives. We're talking about all kinds of things that we need to know from vaccinated people to unvaccinated people who catch COVID-19, as well as to at-home testing and several other conversations. So please, if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to post your question. Any comment, feedback, you are more than welcome. Kennedy Mesa says, thanks for the education. Of course, thank you so very much, Kennedy, uh, for your comments. Uh, doctor, the, what, the, what we want to talk about now is the CDC's recommendation. Uh, now that some males, ages, uh, that is boys and men, actually, ages 12 to 39, should actually consider waiting up to, I think, about eight weeks between the first and second uh, doses of the vaccine instead of the the three or four weeks uh, previously recommended. Uh, how important is this new directive and uh, why was it necessary to come up with this new directive? Excellent, excellent question. Yes, so 
like you said, I think when uh, the vaccines were first rolled out, we know that uh, Moderna was about 28 days in between shots, mm -hmm. and then Pfizer was uh, 21 days in between shots. Um, over you know the course of you know the months that uh, came after the vaccines were introduced, it was realized that a certain set of population were developing um, a condition called myocarditis, which is an inflammation um, around the, the heart. Mm. And um, uh, so I think CDC studied this. And it, 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 though rare, it's a very rare condition for those who mm -hmm. have vaccines, it was realized that the population, males between 12 and 39, were coming down with this myocarditis more often than other populations. And oh, so okay. that informed CDC's uh, uh, recommendation uh, to increase the time interval mm -hmm. between the first dose and the second dose to about eight weeks. And that in general was to just minimize the risk of the myocarditis. Um, it's, to a large extent, a uh, uh, sort of benign condition, but obviously there can be complications from it. So, mm -hmm. so I think that it was appropriate that CDC caught that and mm -hmm. then recommended that the time interval uh, is 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 increased. Um, most of the time, myocarditis are viral uh, infections. I mean, in real life, out of even COVID nineteen. Um, and patients may experience some chest pain, some fatigue, some shortness of breath, and occasionally um, rapid heart rate of what we call like palpitations or irregular heart uh, um, rate. Mm -hmm. Like I said, uh, treatment is dependent on the cause, and most viral infections are self-limiting anyway. So, so that that is what informed um, um, CDC's recommendation for that particular. Age group. Age group. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you for, for the clarification, uh, indeed, as to how it became important. The next thing I want us to take a look at is actually with regards to wearing masks, uh, there's, there's been a lot of guidelines and mandates that have come up as a result of wearing masks, especially as of February 24th, uh, with emphasis here in Minnesota, that is uh, between the cities of Minneapolis mm -hmm. and St. Paul, they actually lifted their indoor uh, mask mandate but they said they will continue to require uh, face coverings in their city-controlled buildings. On the other hand, cities such as uh, Brooklyn Park and even Edina have actually passed resolutions strongly encouraging masks. That is both uh, in, 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 in public uh, buildings as well as uh, government buildings. What we want to know is that what do you know about uh, what probably informed these decisions? Why are cities not at par as to one direction for the people. But for example, the city of uh, Minneapolis and as well the city of uh, St. Paul are having one guideline as against other cities such as Edina or even um, uh, 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 Brooklyn Park. Okay, thank you very much. I think that uh, again, another excellent question. Um, so the mask mandates, um, relaxation, if I can call, call it so, mm -hmm. was recommended by um, uh, the CDC again, um, giving guidelines uh, to uh, states, counties, and cities uh, to decide on, you know, relaxation, relaxing some of the strict uh, mask mandates that we've lived under um, mm -hmm. for the past several months. Um, these these criteria were based on three things. The first one was hospitalizations within the communities. Mm -hmm. Second one was hospital capacity, you know, and the third one was case loads. Okay, mm. so these were the three uh, criteria that were used by uh, CDC. Right, and so there are there are low risk areas. There are medium risk areas and there are high risk areas. 
So some of the recommendations of people designated in the medium or low risk by the CDC do not need to wear a mask indoor or public places. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about low risk, I am talking about caseload of about zero to nine per 100,000 uh, people. So that's up to nine per 100,000. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the medium risk is about 10 to 49. Oh, then okay. high risk is, you know, anything above that, 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 that goal. So I want to believe, and I haven't looked at the, the caseloads and all that stuff in Minneapolis versus Edina versus Brooklyn Park mm -hmm. and things like that to actually decipher where they are. But I want to believe that probably were informed by caseloads. Mm. And I don't know. And I and and even as we speak, it's possible that some of those mandates have been revised without mm -hmm. us knowing because right. the, the f information about uh, uh, COVID has been quite fluid. You know, it, it mm -hmm. changes by the minute. So, but to a large extent, most of the train cities areas uh, are considered as uh, low or medium uh, risk, even though there are areas in greater Minnesota that are still in the, in the high risk. In the uh, high risk. So, so maybe that is what informed the decision. But I think that everything, if counties and cities are following the science and the recommendations per CDC, maybe that is what is informing uh, them on the decisions that they've taken. Wow, it's 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 interesting talking to you because really I get the vibe that yes, everything has to do with data, everything has to do with with the facts on the ground. And that is why even vaccination and conversations like this are important because several times there are people who are just having very vague conversation. Are we doing this because it's this? Are we doing this because it is? But then if it's actually based on the facts and the data available, it helps us to better understand. Uh, Ella Asante Boabe says, thank you, Mr. Beyond and Dr. Sam. Very educative. And of course, Anas Nati says, does the vaccine still protect you if you get COVID-19 at the same time of vaccination? Uh, does the vaccine still protect you if you get COVID-19 at the same time of vaccination? Uh, can we get some input on that? Uh, there's also another question maybe we can also take. So what would you say to those who still have doubts about the vaccine. So, Doc, I'm not sure which, if uh, we understand so this clearly. Let me take the first one. It says, does the vaccine still protect you if you get COVID-19 at the same time? Um, so the, the, the way vaccines work is that when you get vaccinated, your body then reacts to it to produce the antibodies. So it's not like you get vaccinated today and you are fully protected it takes some time for your body to produce because it's you know to produce the antibodies mm. it's different from maybe the second or the booster because by the time you get a second one your body has already set itself in motion produce some antibodies and then and then the booster just boosts the amount of uh, uh antibodies that you mm -hmm. have it's if you get both at the same time, I get ultimately you get double protection. You get a natural immunity and then you get the uh, what do you call it? The, the immunity that is as a result of, of, the, vaccine. of the vaccine. So mm -hmm. I think that's how I would answer the first one. There okay. was a second question, which I missed. Yes, it says, what would you say to those who still have doubts about the vaccines? You know, those who are, it, it's unfortunate that uh, people have doubts um i believe it's been over a year now uh since we had the vaccine because i think it was in december 2020 i believe when yes. the vaccines mm -hmm. were rolled out and initially what, what everybody was saying i'll wait i'll wait i'm not <laughs> sure i'm not sure how long people want to wait you know knowing everything that almost everybody around us who has been vaccinated is still around Indeed, you know. So, so I'm not sure how long you want to wait um, with all the evidence that is now available. So, I just want to encourage everyone. Yes, the numbers have gone down. Yes, masks are being removed and things like that. But 
the vaccines are still good. And I think that if you are not vaccinated at this time, I would just encourage you to take advantage of it and, and get vaccinated ASAP. It would take all of us, all of us, everyone included, to, to, to overcome this pandemic that has been a life changer uh, for many. That indeed has been a life changer for many, but indeed the vaccination is also here to more or less take care of the situation which has been caused by the pandemic. Like I said, we have been having a conversation about how vaccination saves and protects lives, especially drawing the link between vaccinated people who catch COVID-19 and unvaccinated people who catch COVID-19 and the results and of what really happens with their health, especially in critical situations. This conversation is actually made possible by the kind partnership of the African career education and resources uh, of community education in on, on COVID-19. And we are very privileged to be speaking with Dr. Sama Santi Buabe. We are actually getting to the concluding point of this conversation. So please, if you have any questions or any feedback you want to share with us, you are more than also welcome to leave your questions in the comment box and I will definitely take time to read it. Doctor, uh, there are some, I, would, I call them jokes actually, going around that since uh, the Russian invasion, uh, the media is not talking about COVID-19 as much as uh, they would have. And it's, it also means that this is the end of, of COVID-19. Because they said, they are not talking about it. Nobody's getting uh, COVID again. So there is no COVID-19. Uh, will the Russia invasion uh, wipe away COVID-19? Of course, I don't know. But what advice do you have for people who may be under this illusion, especially with the Russian invasion? Well, like you said, I think it's a joke, right? <laughs> I, I, I want to believe that people are, are smarter than, you know, that uh, by, you know, if they take this serious as Russian invasion of Ukraine will wipe out COVID-19. Because the media is not talking about it. So it's like, oh, okay, then there's no, no more <laughs> COVID-19. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand because I, I think that uh, unfortunately, as events in uh, uh, Ukraine uh, uh, are, um, it is by no means a sign that COVID-19 is off the table. It's not. Mm. It is still around. There are still people in the hospital. There are still people who are actually dying from COVID-19 as we speak. Wow. So we shouldn't get any illusions about, yes, the media will, will talk about things that are topical. The media will talk about Ukraine, but I think the media will also talk about COVID. They have, they have talked about it quite mm -hmm. a bit and, uh, and, and then helped us along the way. And I believe that we should not be under any illusions that COVID is completely gone. It may be, it may be like the numbers are going down, but Russia by no means changes the picture at this point. Absolutely. My good friend, Kennedy Mensah, has a question. Do you anticipate another variant in the interim? Uh, it's difficult to tell. Um, it, knowing the, 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 how pandemics go, um, we don't know. Uh, we don't know. But at this point in time, I, I believe that, again, speaking to uh, getting immunized, the vaccinations, mm -hmm. if, all of us will get involved and get vaccinated. I believe that that is the way we win this war against this virus. Um, um, so I don't know. Uh, I wish I could answer that question, but I don't know. Wow. Thank you so very much uh, for your time. Uh, I know your time is very expensive. African Life Talk may not be able to pay when we... <laughs> 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 but then like like always you have been very selfless to really uh, do this for us and the value that you bring to us and our conversations in the community especially with regards to uh, health uh, it's something that we truly appreciate but before i let you go actually my last question will be and i think it's similar to what my, my good friend asked earlier that uh if somebody is just joining us and they want to be sure for the last time before they take the vaccine, what will you tell them as the role of COVID-19 vaccinations in saving and protecting lives? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you mentioned about some friends who had COVID and you, you were actually able to tell the difference between those who had vaccines and mm -hmm. those who did not. Whereas the, those who did not, two of them ended up in the hospital. Those who had it had a milder form 
of uh, COVID-19. So right. the vaccines are the, the way to go at this point. You know, I, I'm going to make a statement. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm right that most of us, probably listeners on the line are from African countries one way or the other. Yeah, and, but, um, we all know the benefits of vaccines in our communities. I mean, mm -hmm. when I was growing up, polio uh, was was almost everywhere. You know, True. who could not walk properly, adults who could not walk properly. You know, the, the era of vaccinations came and now polio is almost wiped out mm -hmm. from the African country. I, I know for sure a place like Ghana. True. Polio is very rare, if not completely wiped out. Mm -hmm. You know, vaccines are very helpful. Uh, we always had vaccines. And I believe that more importantly, this particular one, I think, has been a game changer because we all remember the picture of New York. We all remember the picture of the refrigerated trucks. We all remember, but yeah. sometimes I think we forget. We need True. to remind ourselves of how things have been without the vaccine. So I, I just want to encourage you, if you are sitting on the fence, if, if you are still not sure, look at me, I'm here. I, I've taken three doses right. of the yeah. and I'm here. And I believe that Mr. Beyond and, and majority of the people who are online have taken it. Right. So, so let's, let's do what is right. Let's do what is right by getting Let's back. Let's do what is right. Yes. Wow. Thank you so very much. I truly appreciate the education, your time, and of course, clarifying some of the issues that are at stake, especially with regards to COVID-19 and vaccination. Uh, Kennedy says, thank you, Dr. Sam. Indeed, thank you is, is what we can say. And uh, he also said, even with vaccinated persons, post-exposure complications are very uh, severe. I'm not sure what uh, he means by that post-exposure complications. Oh, so he's saying that, yeah, even with those who are vaccinated, yeah, so I think it actually goes to confirm what we're saying, that even those who are vaccinated are having uh, a post-exposure situation. So if you are not vaccinated, then it means you are at a higher risk mm -hmm. of, 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 of exposure to COVID-19. All right, I'm not sure if you want to make a comment about that, uh, but uh, one thing that I truly uh, appreciate you bringing up is the situation uh, earlier on in the in the fight, especially in New York. Yeah, we saw the tracks and they, they show us how many deaf people were being. And I think, yeah, like you said, we tend to forget the severity of the situation until now. So uh, I'm, I'm happy you try you actually bring our memories back to those situations and how critical that they were. All right, Dr. Sam, thank you. I appreciate your time. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome. All Anytime. right. All right, so we've been having a conversation with Dr. Sam Asante Boabin on vaccination and how it protects and saves lives. If you join the conversation at the tail end, what I can advise you to do is to go back and listen from the beginning so that you can have a clearer understanding of how vaccination is saving life. And if you have any questions whatsoever, you can always reach out to ASAR or African Let's Talk and we'll be more than willing to provide you with the answers and also connect you with the right resources within the community. My name is Collins Kofiopo. Thanks to everybody who joined us. Uh, we're going to take a, uh, a video uh, talking about uh, breakthrough vaccine breakthrough cases. Then after that, we'll say bye-bye to you and see you another time. Have a good evening. You've probably been hearing the term vaccine breakthrough cases, and you may be wondering what they are and what they mean. Breakthrough cases happen when people who are fully vaccinated still test positive for COVID-19. This is normal. No vaccine is 100% effective. The more people get vaccinated, the more we will see breakthrough cases. Let's say in a group of 10 people, nine are vaccinated and one is not. All 10 people are exposed to COVID-19 and two people test positive, one vaccinated and one unvaccinated. Even though half of the infections are breakthrough cases, it can be misleading because the other eight vaccinated people did not get sick from COVID-19. Even though breakthrough cases might happen more as variants circulate, fully vaccinated people are much less likely to get really sick or need hospitalization, so the vaccines are working. This is extremely important to make sure hospitals have enough beds for everyone and people who need emergency care can find it quickly. 
Getting vaccinated is the best way to help protect yourself and the people around you from COVID-19. For more information on COVID-19, visit the Minnesota Department of Health's website. All right. Thanks, everybody. Once again, uh, we have been talking to Dr. Sam on vaccination and how it saves and protects lives. Have a good evening. My name is Collins Kofi Opon. You can always call me Mr. Beyond. Have a good night. Baby.